Good morning, everybody. I'm Nadia Bilchik, and I am delighted to be joined this morning by Mayo Okunolo. And Mayo is a technology and media futurist. He's also the executive director and founder of Eternal Media. And I'm so delighted to have him here because I always say in this time, Mayo's time, you would usually be unaffordable. And we're getting him to share his expertise, both on a macro level, give us some ideas about companies who are pivoting. And also he's happy to talk to you after we go through some of the key companies and ideas around pivoting. So Mayo, a very warm welcome to Nadia Belchik TV. Thank you so much, Nadia. It's a real pleasure to be with everyone today. And good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are. Exactly. We do have people from a variety of places. So, Maya, let's start off with, give us some of your background and times in your life that you have reinvented and pivoted to be where you are today. Yeah, so Nadia, thanks for that. Um, so, I, I have almost 20 years experience in, in leadership, strategy, uh, marketing, business development, basically, you know, running businesses end to end, um, spent time here in the U S market, um, in the African market and roles that served, um, global, you know, whether it's the middle East, whether, um, it's a uh, time at GSMA, um, covering various countries. So, um, I would say I've had some time understanding what it means to have to innovate, to have to pivot, to adapt, to change. Um, you know, your environment is constantly shifting. Of course, there is no precedence to this pandemic. And, you know, it's really um, a very serious affair. Um, but, you know, my hope is that this conversation can help guide us and talk, you know, help us to start thinking about how we might start to adapt um, and innovate for the future and at least get slightly ahead um, in terms of when things get better. And I'm pretty sure I hope they will get better. So, Maya, let's start off with companies right now who are reinventing themselves, who are adapting, who are pivoting. Yeah. So, you know, let's talk about that. I, I, I prepared some slides. Um, you know, sometimes it's easier to run through them. So I'm going to share my screen very quickly with you. Okay. And then Michelle, Terry, Ellen, Nancy, Busi, think of any questions you have or what you'd like to ask. Um, this is a very interactive session and we're just delighted to have you all join us. Yeah, thank you. So welcome again to everyone. So I thought, you know, let's talk about what's going on in, in the U.S. market, just to talk about how certain brands that we're familiar with, multi-billion companies, have had to adapt, right? And then through that, we'll talk about how this might apply to small businesses, medium-sized businesses, and also to individuals, okay? Um, so looked at, took some time out to uh, look at what the likes of Ford and GM are doing, right? Big companies manufacturing and helping other companies to manufacture uh, ventilators. They have very strong manufacturing background. They have very strong skill sets. Um, they're looking at this. Yes, we know that um, you have the Defense um, Protection Act, right? But you also have a sense of community that is really driving these, uh, these companies. And also potentially a sense of, well, what can I do next? What are the strategic, um, what's the strategic direction I can take going forward? Um, you know, and you've also got interesting brands that are stepping into the fold. You've got Louis Vuitton. You know, some of you might ask, well, what is Louis Vuitton doing in this space? Well, Louis Vuitton now, they're they starting to make masks, right? Um, we know right now that the masks that they're making and the gowns are going to healthcare workers, but it'll be interesting to see if then a Louis Vuitton mask becomes a fashion statement of the future. Yeah, why not? I mean, you know, we hope we don't end up wearing masks forever, but we, you know, we could be in situations where, you know, for extra precaution, and people may decide that they want to change the way they live going forward. So this could be a very interesting, interesting trend going forward. Um, you know, another interesting one is, uh, you know, the distilleries and breweries. Um, Anheuser-Busch, um, they've now stepped into the space of um, hand sanitizers. Um, I'm sure they're doing fine. I mean, people I'm sure are still consuming beer, maybe not to the same level or degree as before, but um, they have now made that transition into this. I mean, that is a fascinating pivot, don't you think? I mean, here you are, a brewery. So what did they have? What did they have existing that they were able to utilize those ingredients or those facilities to pivot to sanitizers? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's basically, you know, 
well-run shops, very good in terms of being able to turn things around because of good processes, good procedures, the supply chain, the back end is there. They're able to get these pr products out there and in the hands of um, individuals. And in some cases, um, not just with Anheuser-Busch, um, but they work with um, those in, who are existing, who actually make hand sanitizers right now, um, they help improve that process. Um, and they help getting out, they helping to getting out there. So there's a win-win here in terms of being able to get um, uh, some of this product out to customers and help um, hospitals. Um, it's really, I would say, this sense of community is, is, is very important and the sense of collaboration. Okay. Yes, and then let's move on to other people, ideas, and, and as people watching this, I mean, the idea is to say, given my current infrastructure, given what I'm doing, how do I repurpose? Because this takes a certain mindset, don't you think, Mayo? Yeah, it, it does. You know, you really have to, um, you know, be ready and, um, you know, take, take that step forward. I mean, the, 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 most people, you know, they can either, you know, close off from the world or you start thinking about, well, how do I get out of the gate um, when this thing turns around? And we begin to see uh, people step up in that regard. So when we talk about, you know, look at the companies that are, have solutions um, that are, you know, doing well during the pandemic, you know, everybody's watching Netflix, um, Zoom, you know, we're on a Zoom now right now. Um, you have um, Instacart, you have, um, uh, you know, companies like Slack and Hulu and so on, okay? Um, what I so find tell us a little about Slack. Yeah, so Slack is um, basically uh, a workspace where you can collaborate um, either with um, fellow colleagues to get work done. Uh, so, you know, when you talk about project managers who have products to deliver and get done, this is a great workspace. So you get to see what everyone's working on. You, you get to communicate to, with them on a real-time basis. You get to um, share files and documents. So you're working. I mean, you know, we do that anyway through email, through text messaging, through WhatsApp and so on. But it's an environment that captures as much of this and makes life easier. So you're seeing more of that being done, particularly with people being at home, working from home during this time. What's interesting, though, you know, Zoom has been criticized for security breaches. So I'm curious, you know, people say Microsoft is going to be the next big platform for this kind of conversation. And I'm also thinking, you know, where does one invest? So I was hoping today's call would be useful, not only in terms of ideas to pivot your company, but we're all looking for the next thing. What's the smart thing to invest in? Of course, we all should have invested in Zoom uh, Four months ago correct yeah maybe you know uh zoom zoom is uh they've really in terms of users they don't share their numbers um but you know it's out there that um you know they've really grown quite quickly i think it's almost 20 i think they had um don't, don't quote me but i know they've doubled what they had 2019 they were at a certain number in, within the past uh two months they've doubled well i'm it. interested michelle young and you can answer this question before this was zoom part of your life yes actually my company used zoom for daily huddles in the mornings okay so you've been familiar with zoom had you always done virtual conversations via zoom before you know our zoom calls were mostly in the mornings and they weren't video because we were ah. in car they were audio and we were in cars and things so for safety's sake it was mostly audio but yes and now michelle what do you do i'm in sales for mid america specialty services so you're now working from home and you used to go into an office correct interesting and i'm curious uh, terry for you was zoom something you used extensively in your concierge um, medical consulting business yeah so we've actually been using it for uh, over four years uh the company that i run is headquartered in chicago but as you might be able to see by my background, <laughs> yeah, I, I live in Atlanta, uh, though I travel every week or I had been until six weeks ago. And so I would do uh, management team meetings and other events through Zoom for the last four years. So, so you have been you're using an early adopter. Right, yeah. really. Um, so just curious to know how many are pivoting towards using 
you technology had used it before, but now are on camera. So again, and Terry, what's interesting is in your world of physicians, and Maya, you'll find this interesting, is you've got physicians who are often superb at doing what they do, which is taking care of patients, but their technology expertise, you know, these are all things they are having to learn. And I know you are part of teaching them this. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I, you know, and this is, um, and thanks for that, Nadia and uh, Michelle, Terry. Uh, you know, this is a time where people are now facing this whole digital, um, uh, should I say, space. Uh, it's all of a sudden for some. Um, but really, it's, it's important that, um, you know, uh, folks like us, right, have, you know, we step up and we give back. Okay, I think this is important. Just to be able to spend time with guys, small businesses and individuals, it's important. Um, you know, it's amazing for me, somebody who's so used to using the most, what I would call fundamental technology, whether it's uh, Microsoft, um, to, to be, you know, sitting in front of somebody who wants to understand how this works and then take them to a place where they are having meetings and getting work done online. So this is what we will help with. Okay, so this is what Eternal Media helps with. We can help with um, strategic direction. We can help with thinking through how you want to build your business and plan. What are, what, what are the core skills that you have? We'll look at your, your strengths, your weaknesses, what you want to do, and help you through that. Um, and I think this is the future in terms of how we can bridge this gap very quickly because we now know that you can't leave that space anymore. Um, you can't leave that wide gap. You've got to move into it um, in order to survive. Oh, that's a, so, and, and that's a great service because people are at different levels of proficiency. So Mayo, let's move on. And then obviously we'd love to hear from you, Christoph, and we'll see you and Nancy yeah. and Alan. Okay, so this is assessing your career pivot options. If you are on this call or watching this video, because I'm happy to say this is going on to my YouTube channel for all of you, is everyone is in a different space right now. Yeah. So Mayo, advice guidance you have for corporations and individuals. Yeah. So, you know, very, very simple. Let's not get too deep. Um, you know, there are different degrees of pivots because, you know, um, as of this morning, one in seven Americans are, are, are basically out of work. Okay. So there's going to be some real thinking in terms of how do you then start thinking about where you want to go? There are small pivots. Okay. There are medium pivots. And there are major pivots. Um, when we talk about small pivots, we look at, we talk about how you want to get back into that local employer space, um, finding work that is still relevant for you. Um, an example of a medium pivot would be, well, how do I um, step into this remote digital space? Um, is it worth, is it time for me to set up that side gig, that online business that uh, is going to allow me to manage myself if I should ever hit um, a hurdle like this again. Then you've got more major pivots, right? Which means well, I want to, you know, is it time for me to change my profession? Do I see a future for my profession? Is, do I need to future-proof my um, profession? So is it an industry change? Am I open to relocation to other parts of the world? Where should I go? All these are conversations that, you know, someone like me can have with you and start thinking it through. Even to the point of making suggestions about, you know, businesses out there, companies out there, you know, maybe even some connects and in, in, for you to talk to. So I think these are um, services that are, we're going to start seeing these things pop up more, whether it's virtual webinars, uh, which we offer, um, and then talking to you one-on-one, -on -one, even thinking through how to get your business on, on the new track, I would say. Excellent. And then we move on to how we should proceed. Oh, this is excellent. Because at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's all very well having the mindset, but what strategies, what absolute hardcore ideas do you have to help us move forward? Yeah, so I, I think the point here is, you know, be hopeful, um, know that change is, you know, we all know change is, um, is, is, is for sure something that, you know, we can't get away from. Um, you know, I just, I know I was online, I was looking through and I saw this, that uh, this young man, his name is Avi Schiffman, um, 17 year old. Okay. He took it upon himself to build a website where he went out and he gathered all the information, um, for COVID, uh, um, testing COVID, those who had been infected deaths. Um, he started with China and 
Before you knew it, he was pulling all that information from all over the world and putting it into one repository. All right. And um, that's an interesting example because then, you know, it makes you think, well, what else is out there um, that I can do um, if I'm technically inclined? Okay. The other one is, you know, if you are a, um, a doctor or a healthcare professional, psychologist, lawyer, you know, you've got a wonderful site out there that's called betterhelp.com. You know, these are professional licensed vetted counselors that do e-counseling. Okay. Um, and, you know, as you think through this time, you know, I would say to individuals and even companies, you know, this might be a good time to send some employees back to some training. Um, there are websites out there that will allow you to go through some free courses and potentially even start thinking about how you want to get um, certified or recertified. And this will help you as you think through your small pivots, your medium, medium pivots and your major pivots. Um, so this is not comprehensive by any means, but it starts to kind of put shape and guide as to what to do next. So that's an excellent point there, Mayo. And I'm interesting for you, Terry Bauer. And Terry manages the back-end businesses for concierge physicians. I'm sure this is something you're certainly thinking about is how has that shifted for you in terms of what advice and guidance are you giving your physicians? Well, uh, as you might imagine, there's fewer and fewer patient visits to the offices. In fact, I read something this morning that uh, traditional physician practices are seeing a 70% decline in office visits. Uh, we, three weeks ago, put all of our doctors on a telemedicine platform so that they can now communicate with their patients via telemedicine, reach out to them proactively, and, and be the connection point. So all these things are new and these are things that they all have to pivot. And like any population, you've got certain people who adopt early, certain people who adopt thereafter, and certain people who never adopt. And so that's very interesting. How do we help? And Mayo, you can, you know, there are people, as you say, who have never done this before that they open. Then there are people who this, this evokes a great sense of fear and anxiety. Yes. Yeah. So Terry, I, I thank you for that, um, laying that out. So I, I would look at you and I would say, you know, you know, you had to all of a sudden figure out what platform to use. You may have been going through a period where you're like, oh, we're assessing five of them, we're still at it, we're still thinking through it. Well, you know, where, who else has done that? Who else has identified and done that work? So there are um, companies that um, I'm aware of that I've worked with in the IoT space, in the IP space, um, who serve urban um, communities and rural communities. Because a great number of um, um, folks, you know, they live in rural communities, they travel hours before they get to, 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 to get healthcare. But guess what? The internet, the coverage is not so strong. So how do you then start thinking about identifying these areas and working with um, wireless internet service providers to provide that. So those are areas that, you know, someone like me would then step in and say, this, this company is doing it, this individual is doing it. Um, they're partnered with this, um, um, you know, with this uh, big project that's going on. So we can bring that to the table and then start talking about how do you scale a telemedicine platform? Um, how do you leverage it in other ways, whether it's payments and so on. Um, so those are um, things that I would say core skill sets that we bring to the table as a business and we partner with others to make it a reality. That makes a lot of sense. And then the last thing I know you wanted to share with us in terms of just understanding and then please ask any questions. Yeah. So, you know, I think, um, you know, going forward, um, we just, it's tough this time, you know, it's, 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 it's mentally draining. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm home right now, you know, I, I know I've got all dressed up for this call, but half the time mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not anywhere this, as dressed as, 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 as this. Um, but um, I think it's important to just stay busy and, and continue to think and reach out and connect and kudos to joining um, calls like this. Maya, you, you mentioned something so important there, which is partnering with the right people. So, and this is for those of you who are on this call and Alan Hess, we'd love to hear from you because <laughs> there's Mayo. But 
partnering with people and, and calling somebody like Mayo for what I call a discovery session, which is just, hi, Mayo, I heard you on this Nadia Belchik podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my business. Do you have any ideas for me? And what I so appreciated about Mayo coming on this call was I said to him, we're all at a time of being go-givers as much as go-getters. And he said he would be very happy to do a 15-minute discovery call with you or your business just to say, do I have ideas and am I the right consultant? So please take him up on that, yeah. you know, to say, and it could be in sales, Michelle, your company, Mayo, this is my problem. And then Mayo, one thing I know, and I have worked with Mayo over the years, if he can help you and he does have resources, but if he thinks there's someone better or a different idea, he will happily give that to you. But this is so much a time to collaborate. And I wanted to share an example. So doing these conversations that I've been doing, I got a call from uh, Nico Stain, a former MNET, and Mayo knows me from my MNET days in South Africa, is, and Nico said, Nadia, I've been watching your program. I'd like to take your content and put it on my YouTube platform. So I love that idea of collaboration, collaboration, because that's what we're all looking to do. Well, he's done such a good do- job of using my YouTube on his platform. And I called him the other day and I said to him, you know, Nico, your YouTube with my contact looks so much better than mine. Do you have any ideas for me? And just an exploratory session. And he said, yes, you need to do A, you need to do B, you need to do C. And he's now doing it for me. So I think we're at a point where we also have to say, who are the people in my existing network, right, Mayo? And what ideas do I have? Now, Terry Bauer, who's on this call, is another great example of us collaborating. And you know, Terry called me and said, uh, one of your podcasts, I've got some really good physicians. As I say, he manages concierge practices. And he said, I've got an outstanding guy. And it was one of those moments where I thought in the, in the absolute spirit of open communication, collaboration and discovery, I reached out to Terry, who happens to be on this call right now. And I did a superb interview yesterday with one of his concierge physicians. Right, Mayo, I think this really is a time to see who I can have discovery sessions with. And someone like Mayo, and I say this, normally wouldn't be available to us. And right now he's saying, well, you can have 15 minutes of my time. (laughs) This is a good time. I was making fun the other day. I said, you know, this is probably a good time to, to reach Oprah. You know, so exactly <laughs> correct. <laughs> so you know, I mean, that's gonna go. It's gonna go at some point. Um, and I, and I think uh, you know, it's 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 nice. It's refreshing because uh, you know, it's also important to share um, thoughts and ideas. And you know, for me, for my business and for my consultancy, what I do on a regular basis is is exactly that. Um, you know, looking at how things are being done and giving um, advice on how to proceed and helping to actually implement and make it a reality. Yes. Um, and, um, I, I, and I think, you know, talking to Michelle, talking to Terry, uh, I know we didn't hear from um, um, uh, others. We're about to hear from Christoph. So Christoph, I'm unmuting you so you can tell us what you do. Yeah, please. Christoph, if you can still hear us, unmute yourself so you can tell us what you do. Or oh, Alan, please tell us what you do. Uh, well, right now, I'm actually in a transition mode. My, uh, my job ended back in December. And uh, interesting time to hit the job market as the economy kind of hit the skids. So um, just uh, I'm spending a lot of time doing exactly what you're talking about, talking to friends, colleagues, uh, friends of friends, people I'm getting introduced to, and, and looking at how to, how to pivot and take what I've been doing the last 25 plus years and leverage that into the marketplace as it starts to open up. It's not gonna stay shut forever. So I'm trying to be positioned for when it does open up. Yes, but Alan, you said something so um, really exemplary. It was Alan said, you know, I'm in transition right now and I'm waiting for it to open up. And what I appreciated about that, you, you sounded optimistic you're in transition, there's not a sense of, oh, I lost my job, I'm unemployed. And that's something that I share with the people I coach and train is, you know, yes, you're in transition right now, along with the rest of America. And Ellen, I happen to know well, has tremendous skills. And this is a time to reach out even to the Terry Bowers who are givers and say, Terry, I 
met you on the Zoom call with Nadia and Mayo. Um, this is what I do. Do you have any ideas for me? So by the way, that's a sentence, Mayo, that I share. If I wanted advice or guidance from Mayo, it's not Mayo, can you give me your brains? Or I hate that sentence, can I pick your brain? What I like is Mayo, you've really been very successful in your consulting businesses and helping other businesses pivot. I'm trying to do X right now. Do you have any advice or guidance for me? People are happy to give advice or guidance if you ask them in a respectful way. What they're not happy to do is, can you give me a list of all your contacts? So I would say make it a request, not a demand. Make it a graceful and gracious request. So Christoph, are we ready to hear from you? Christoph is, is a good friend and um, former colleague, ah. uh, but he might be traveling. I'm not sure. <laughs> okay. Well, here's a part of him. Is Nancy, can we hear from you? So Nancy, tell us what you're doing right now and any advice or guidance we can give you on pivoting. Um, yes, I'm actually an outside sales rep for a promotion company that does screen printing, embroidery and um, employee recognition. And we just recently pivoted to start making cloth masks. Um, so the good thing is, is that we're making them for a lot of our local companies here in Wisconsin. Um, the bad part is, is our production is now backed up about six weeks. So me being in sales, I am struggling with trying to keep my book of business going, um, knowing that our production is out so far um and most companies honestly don't want to talk to a sales rep right now because they're trying to figure out if they can stay afloat okay so i have some thoughts and what i'm going to do is i'm going to stop our recording at 11 45 just for the purposes of editing but we are available for you to talk to so nancy i have a suggestion there you're right now is not a time to solicit business but now is a time to reach out and hi terry it's nancy I know the times are unprecedented. I know everyone's scrambling right now and probably X is the last thing on your mind. However, I wanted to let you know that I'm doing X and please let me know how I can be a resource for you. So what I did early on in this process was reached out to all my clients. I had so many keynotes booked and seminars and I just put in the subject line, who would have ever thought? And I just said, hi, I know training and speaking may be the last thing, but please know should you need, I'm now online, let me know how I can be a resource for you. And in the spirit of let me know how I can be a resource for you and checking in with the person, again, you're being transparent. I'm telling you I'm now available online, but I'm also doing it in a very gracious way. So a lot depends on how we reach out. On one of our last calls, we had someone who's in the wedding planning business. She said, right now, I feel terrible reaching out to clients or customers, or she's in Las Vegas. I said, but it is fine to reach out and say to your former partners, we're all going through this together. Just to let you know, I am still working. I'm prepping for 2000 or later in the year. Let me know if there's any way I can help you. So I think we have to be comfortable doing that as long as we're authentic and transparent. And we do it in the spirit of what I see on LinkedIn is people saying, please don't solicit me right now. Yeah. And we don't want to be solicited, but we are happy to be checked in. How are you doing? What are your challenges right now? How has your life changed? you know, those things we can easily do. So for the purposes of recording, and you can all stay here, I am going to officially end. So Mayo Okanola, thank you so much to all of you who joined us. Thank you so much. And may we all continue to pivot and hopefully eventually profit as we continue to really navigate uncharted waters. I'm Nadia Bilchik. For more information, please go on to Nadia Speaks.